How's it going, Eliminators? Do you have a riding lawnmower or push mower that only seems to run when the choke is engaged or when the choke is disengaged, the engine seems to shut off after maybe one or two strips into cutting your lawn? Today, I'll be showing you what to look for if that happens. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So in the shop today, I have a Yard Machines riding lawnmower. This is made by MTD. This has a 13 and a half horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine, but this issue that I'm gonna be talking about today can happen to pretty much any lawnmower out there, whether it's a riding mower or a push mower. And on this particular riding lawnmower, the throttle lever and the choke lever is incorporated into one cable. So to start this, you would push this lever all the way forward. The choke would now be engaged. Now my customer's main complaint was that the engine would only seem to run on choke. It would run rough, but when the choke lever there was disengaged, the engine would only run for a very short period of time and then it would just shut off. After waiting a little while, they could start the riding lawnmower again, but shortly thereafter, the engine would once again shut off. Now, as I've shown in previous videos, whenever an engine only runs on choke and when you disengage the choke lever, the engine shuts off, nine out of 10 times, that is going to tell me that the main jet inside of the carburetor is clogged or partially clogged. So I have a little plastic Briggs & Stratton carburetor here to help explain. This is going to be the choke plate and you're going to start it with the choke plate closed or the choke engaged. Now what that does is it blocks off the majority of air and it increases the amount of fuel that is drawn up the main jet, thus richening your fuel to air ratio. And once that engine has enough fuel to get started, you disengage the choke lever, which opens the choke plate, allowing the engine to have the proper air fuel ratio. Now I know that I said nine out of 10 times, it's the carburetor. Generally, the bowl of the carburetor gets loaded up with gunk and the carbs eventually get dirty and need to be cleaned. However, for that 10% of the time, you're going to wanna to come to the fuel tank and check the fuel cap because there's something very important on this fuel cap that we're going to wanna to inspect. So the way that a lawnmower's fuel system works is very simple. You have a fuel tank with fuel in it. You have the fuel line going down. On some mowers, you may have a fuel filter. You may even have a shutoff valve. And then the fuel line is going to go to the carburetor. Now, for the most part, this is going to be a sealed system. If it wasn't, you would smell fuel and there would most likely be fuel leaking. So the fuel system has to be sealed. Now, as the engine burns the fuel from the bowl of the carburetor, the fuel tank's fuel level is going to decrease. You can see here that my customer has just under half of a tank. Now, there's going to be a capacity of that fuel tank, and that's going to be your volume. As the volume of fuel decreases, you are going to have to replace the upper part of that volume with air. And that is where the fuel cap comes into play. So on the majority of riding lawnmowers, you are going to have what's known as a vented fuel cap. The cap screws on, and I'll try to zoom in here. There is going to be a tiny little hole on a lot of these riding lawnmowers or push mowers, whatever it may be, and it's going to be right in the center. Now, some fuel caps, like on the Tecumseh snowblowers, vent through the threads. So on those, you wanna make sure you don't crank them down too tight. And on other MTD riding mowers, you may even see a separate check valve with a tube coming off of it, and that helps those tanks vent. But on this particular riding lawnmower, you can see that the fuel cap has a hole right in the middle, and we can see that it is in fact plugged. Now, if you do have a riding lawnmower or a push mower that only runs when the choke lever is engaged or runs for a very short period of time after the choke lever has been disengaged, one of the easiest ways to diagnose that is come up to your fuel cap and loosen it off. And this fuel cap is extremely tight. So that means that there is actually going to be a negative pressure built up inside of that fuel tank. So as the fuel level has gone down, fresh air was not able to vent into the tank to replace that volume. That means that we had a negative pressure building up in the top section of that fuel tank, which will actually create what's known as vapor lock and will not allow the fuel to travel down the fuel line to the carburetor, essentially starving the engine for fuel. Now you don't have to take the fuel cap off. You just want it to the point where it's slightly loose and wobbles. And I can now smell some vapors of that fuel that is inside of the tank. That's telling me that the fuel tank will be able to vent now. So at that point, you can now start your engine with the choke lever engaged. 
disengage the choke lever and then allow the engine to run past the amount of time that the engine would have normally shut off. If it runs for a longer period of time, then you have successfully identified the issue causing your engine to shut off. Now we can see here that this fuel cap looks super dusty and dirty. And again, you can see that center hole where the vent is, that is supposed to allow air in to the fuel tank, that's completely clogged. However, you'll notice that the riding lawnmower looks fairly clean. That's because this mower has already been fully serviced. I've went ahead, replaced the fuel filter, changed the oil and the air filter on the engine, as well as cleaned the top and the bottom of the deck. And I'd like to show you a photo of how much grass we took off of this riding lawnmower. So all of that is dry grass. And as I recommend to my customers, cutting in the dry is one of the best things you can do. However, you have to clean off the lawnmower with an air compressor or get in there and pull out the clumps of dried grass by hand. So even though cutting in the dry is one of the best things you can do to extend the life of your metal mower deck, not cleaning out that dry debris will end up leading to something like this. And I've actually saved a Ziploc bag full of some of the stuff that we pulled off of the mower deck. At the top of the bag, you can see all of the longer dried grass clippings. However, near the bottom of the bag, you guys can see all of the fine debris that this stuff will eventually break down to. Check that out guys. So that's just some of the stuff that came out of this mower and all of that fine debris as it circulates around the engine bay eventually loads up in that little vent there, clogging it, resulting in the engine not running properly. So how do we properly clean out a gas cap? Well, what you're not going to wanna to do is take a compressor and blow all the way through because you could end up pushing that debris into the inner side of this cap here, which actually has a soft rubber insert. Now on some of these, they remove. You can simply peel them out and go in there and rinse it and blow out the stuff and then push that back in. Now this rubber insert here is removable, so I'll try to pull that out. That's what it looks like. So there's going to be three holes here that the air would vent into the tank. It's held in place by that little hole which goes over top of this little barb there. So the air comes in from that hole and goes underneath this plastic little insert around to this which seals inside of there and then vents through those holes into the tank. So again, we don't really wanna push all of that stuff through. So one of the best things that I can do because I have the ultrasonic cleaner is I usually just toss these into the ultrasonic cleaner and it completely blasts away all of the gunk. But I know a lot of you guys don't have one of those. So what you can do is simply put this into your kitchen sink or a bucket of hot water and some soap and allow all of that fine debris inside of that vent to soften up. And a lot of times you can clean them out that way. Now my ultrasonic cleaner has been used to clean a carburetor, so it is pretty dirty. However, the vibrations is what we're using to clean this cap here. So I have the cap with the hole or vent facing downwards, and I'm going to lay that in there. I'm going to submerge the cap and try to submerge that piece of rubber. And then I'm gonna run the ultrasonic cleaner for about five or 10 minutes. However, I'll have to cut off the audio or else this is what it'll sound like. Now, if you guys had an engine that was experiencing vapor lock and you went and thought that maybe it's the fuel filter that's clogged up and you replace the fuel filter, when you disconnect that fuel line, you may notice that the fuel tank doesn't drain all that well. And then it might start draining a little better. What that means is that once you've disconnected the fuel line from the fuel filter, you've unsealed this fuel system here and you're allowing air to go into that fuel line. And because the tank has a negative pressure, it may actually suck some air up through the tank, which then equalizes the pressure in the fuel tank, allowing that fuel to drain. So if you simply disconnect the fuel line, change your fuel filter and hook the fuel line back up, your engine may run for a longer period of time than it once did when that tank was under a negative pressure. So for me, as you saw, diagnosing vapor lock when the issue is happening is very easy to diagnose. However, recreating the initial vapor lock is a little more difficult because you have to wait a little while for that tank to become negatively pressurized. 
This isn't something that happens right away. It does take a little while, which a lot of times is why you're going to hear people saying that my riding mower will cut maybe half the lawn and then it'll shut off. I can let it sit out there for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, go back, it fires right up again, and then I can cut the rest of my lawn. So at this point, you can see the fuel cap looks pretty much brand new compared to what it looked like before covered in all of that fine dry debris. So you can use an air compressor blow tool to blow through that cap because we wanna make sure that it is venting and not just clean. Or you could just put your lips around here and blow on it. So I'll show you what that should sound like. So now that we know that the fuel cap is not only clean but it's venting properly we can reassemble the inner rubber insert there so that just presses on like that and then again that little barb in the center holds it into place and we can reinstall this onto our fuel tank There you have it guys, how to successfully diagnose and repair vapor lock on a riding lawnmower. And just to point something out before I wrap up this video, because this engine is equipped with a Nikki carburetor, when the engine is cold, this engine does tend to hunt or surge, which is the engine revving up and down for a very brief period of time after the engine has just been started for the first time. That's referred to as a cold start. Once the engine is warm, you can shut off the engine and restart it and the engine will not surge. Nikki carburetors are known to surge like that and I do have a video showing you guys how to fix that by oversizing a vent hole inside of the carburetor. You're gonna need a micro drill bit set to do that, but I can link that video in the top right of the screen as well as in the description down below. And the reason why I oversize the vent hole and not the pilot jet like I normally would do is because on some of these Nikki carburetors, the pilot jet is actually hidden and you can't get to it. And I believe that video shows me doing that on a snowblower carburetor. Basically, it's the same kind of carburetor, just a different application. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I wanted to get that info out there. Checking the gas cap vent is one of the easiest and quickest things that you can do. A lot of the times it'll get a customer up and running again without spending a whole bunch of money. But with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.